So tissue clearing tips, direct or indirect labeling, autofluorescence, multicolor labeling, and troubleshooting. So first off here, direct versus indirect labeling. So with direct labeling, the antibody is conjugated to a fluorescent marker. There's no application of signal, so sometimes not sufficient for larger tissues. However, this is faster. So if we're only using primary labeling, we don't have to go through a secondary labeling process, which doubles our labeling time. So to use the extreme example of trying to label a whole mouse brain, that could take 240 hours to actually label that whole mouse brain with primary and secondary. So an incredibly long period of time to do that, whereas if you just had primary labeling, it would be 120 hours. So we're cutting that time in half. However, the problem with primary labeling is that for thicker tissues, you're not going to get enough signal back the deeper you go into your tissue. So you might get labeling to a millimeter in depth, but you might only have enough signal back to your detector that's over the noise of the background to get 100 or 200 microns of depth into your tissue. So practically speaking, we always try and go with secondary labeling. Though it reduces our throughput, it dramatically improves our signal intensity and also the quality of the images that we're acquiring from our tissue because we have a much higher signal compared to the background that we're getting back from our tissue. So indirect labeling, it requires two different steps, but that signal that we're getting back is much, much better and provides us a much higher quality of image back to our detector. Autofluorescence is always a problem with any kind of fluorescent imaging that you're using because if you have a high background signal on your tissue, it doesn't matter how uniform your labeling is or how strong that intensity is, you aren't going to be able to see it because you cannot break it out from the background. And because of that, your image quality be very, very poor. We see this commonly for liver tissues, for kidneys, for tissues that are highly collagenous in nature, we get lots of background fluorescence. So to mitigate this, you can bleach your tissues, you can try all of your tissue processing steps at four degrees C instead of room temp or 37 degrees C, and you can also image your tissues with a background channel and then subtract that channel out from your other channels through uh, data processing after you've analyzed your tissue. For multicolor labeling, we can typically go after up to four targets at the same time depending upon your imaging system and the filters that you have. You have to choose your labels wisely so you don't have bleed over between the different channels, but generally speaking, you can get up to about four channels, maybe five channels, depending upon the type of microscope that you're working with and the type of, um, the type of uh, filters that you have on your microscope system. You must choose your primary and secondary antibodies carefully, though. You need different host species for each target. So example of two targets, GFAP and NUEN, we use a chicken anti-GFAP, Alexaflor 48 conjugated goat anti-chicken secondary, and then rabbit anti-NUEN with a Texas red conjugated donkey, uh, donkey anti-rabbit secondary. So primaries can be incubated simultaneously, though, so we don't have to do this sequentially and dramatically and uh, increase that time. So we can do those at the same time. And then secondaries can also be incubated simultaneously. So we're not having to go from two steps to eight steps. We can do those at the same time, even if we're using four targets, so long as we choose what we're doing for labeling very, very wisely. To give you some images here, these are some Z projections of a rat brain to show that you can, in fact, image in multiple channels. And in this case, we're tiling uh, nine different tiles here to create the image on the left. That's a 20x. On the right there is a 40x. So we can show that we can see through this depth, but of course the depth by which we can image is really going to be dictated by the type of imaging system and the objectives that we have on that confocal or on that light sheet microscope. One of the troubleshooting problems that we see come up a lot, like I mentioned earlier, was uneven staining. So if our staining intensity is way too high on the outside of our tissue, like I'm showing on this 3D cell culture model on the top right here, what this typically means is our antibody concentration is way too high. They're getting stuck on the outside and we're not getting the ability to penetrate all the way into the interior of that 3D cell culture model, whereas on the bottom we have more optimal labeling and we see labeling across the entire depth of that 3D cell culture model. So you'll see a dense band of labeling on the outside, but no labeling on the inside or very, very dim labeling. And this is an indication of um, uneven staining and, of course, um, not the right antibody concentration. So this is kind of a telltale sign. And with labeling and with tissue clearing, this is the most common problem that we see researchers come up to. And then also, optical attenuation due to absorption of photons by the upper layers of tissues 
can cause shadowing and um, tissues or layers of tissue below the, uh, the top of the tissue to appear dim and not to have a lot of signal on them. What's happening in this case is not uneven labeling, but what's happening is as we're getting through the depth of the tissue, the top layers are actually clouding the bottom layers or not getting a lot of photons back to our detector. So one of the things that you can do with some microscopes to interact with this problem is you can actually increase the laser power as you go deeper and deeper into a tissue. So you're increasing that signal that you're getting back, not because the fluorescent labeling is not there, but because you're not getting the same number of photons back to your detector as you're getting higher in a tissue. So that's another problem that we see that's not labeling induced, that's more so imaging and optical attenuation induced. Now to dive into the last section here, we're going to talk about imaging and different types of imaging modalities that are out there and how best to adopt them for using with the ABCAM kits here with specific labels and um, specific targets in specifically brain tissue.